Welcome to the Faith is Not Blind podcast. I'm Kevin Knight, and I'm here in Gothenburg, Sweden with Louis Hooray. Louis, thanks for being with us. Hi, great to be here. Thanks, Kevin, for having me. Well, I'd like to maybe start um, by asking you how it is you came to be a member of the church. Um, I was uh, born and raised in the church. Okay. Yeah, so I was baptized uh, at eight years old in, in, uh, in this chapel where we are now. Wow. And uh, by my brother, Per, who you've also interviewed. Uh-huh. Uh, he was 16 then. Um, yeah, I've, I've always had, uh, a, you know, of course, back then, uh, me and my wife, we sometimes talk about how, how easier it was back then because, you know, you have all your social connections in church. And so it was easy for me. I always loved coming to church. Okay. Uh, it's different perhaps from some of our students now. They're, they're, they may be alone in their families, not so many acquaintances in the church. Mm-hmm. I was very lucky. Um, I had everything I wanted in, in the church and found very much uh, solace and comfort in the gospel. Mm-hmm. And uh, slowly grew my testimony. Okay. To it is today. And you refer to students. You work for CES. That's right. I'm I'm uh, I'm excited to be a, a coordinator for seminaries and institutes. Been now for 19 years. Wow. Yeah. So it 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 um, it seems to me that the church has very much changed its approach over the years to the institute program, the seminary program, and just general curriculum yeah. and things like yeah. that. Uh, Which I'm really happy about. Yeah. Way, yeah. So, so, uh, what direction do you see it going, and and why do you think that that's better? Well, uh, uh, we're, I'm excited about what, what's happening in the church. I'm glad um, that it's uh, the church is transparent. I believe it's always has been mm-hmm. transparent, but now with the internet exploding and everything, I think we're doing what we can to bring the information out there to to help people make uh, you know good choices for themselves. Um, and um, in seminaries and institutes, we're also working, trying to help, help our students and find ways for them to, you know, grow their testimonies, and understand certain topics better. Um, I don't see us coming. We haven't reached the, the goal yet. I'm not sure if we have right. that, but we're on, on a good road to doing that. We've changed some of our uh, focus. Uh, we talked, you remember the scripture mastery I verses? Do. I do. I'm not trying to do <laughs> very well. How many do you remember? Not many. <laughs> not many. Not many. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you know, we've, we've learned those, we memorized those, and, and uh, some students are better at that than others. But, but um, sometimes, and, and we've thought about this, sometimes we, we read those scriptures and we memorize them just for the sake of doing it, you know. Uh, right now we have something called doctrinal mastery which is in focus. We didn't take away the scripture mastery, but right. we use those scriptures to help us understand the doctrine. So it's not the verse itself, but the doctrine that's in the center. Um, and we talk about doctrines like the atonement, um, the fall, the restoration, and family, priesthood, right. temple, and so on. Um, so we're, we're focusing a lot on that, uh, helping our students to, to uh, understand. We have a, we have a some, uh, I think it's called in English, the objective. Mm-hmm. In, in S&I, in seminaries and institutes, which is to help students to, to understand and rely on the teachings and the atonement of Jesus Christ. And that is the foundation. You know, once you have that, then you can try to help them to prepare for the temple blessings and, and prepare for you know, eternal life in general. And how do we do that? Well, we help them to learn the doctrine. We go into the doctrine itself as we, as we go through our curriculum. So, so the, teach, the teacher's uh, guide, mm-hmm. I think that's what you call it in English, is, uh, is changed uh, somewhat to, to try to help uh, the students focus more on the doctrine. Um, and to have the doctrine make a change in their life. You know, not just, not just learning in theory, but actually trying to understand it, rely on it, and then apply it. And once you do that, um, it's like, I think it's John seven seventeen. Once you do God's will, when you do these things, and then you know if the doctrine's from God or not. So it's, right. it's in the application that's important. So we're trying to gear them toward that. That reminds me of one of my favorite scriptures, which, if I'm not mistaken, is a scripture mastery, <laughs> yeah. uh, where the Lord tells us that he will tell us through the Holy Ghost mm-hmm. in our mind and in our heart. Yeah. And it, it, uh, a lot of what you've just talked about has been understanding the doctrine and understanding the history, those kinds of things yeah. that you teach, mm-hmm. but then so that it can be applied. Right. So what, um, what, what do you feel is the role of the study of, say, history or the study of, say, doctrine, right. that Joseph, the, 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 the theology that mm-hmm. Joseph Smith restored and that mm-hmm. modern prophets have continued to reveal? Yeah. What role does that play vis-a-vis 
um, heartfelt faith, and I feel good about this. Right, yeah. How do you balance well, the two? Well, well, you can feel good about lots of things. I mean, you can have cozy moments and feel love in the air, you know, when you fall in love, or if, if I watch a good movie, I feel something, or sure. listen to good music. But the, the, the promptings of the Spirit is something else. Um, I really, truly believe when, when the Lord speaks to Oliver Cowdery, I think it's DNC uh, chapter 6, mm -hmm. um, that nothing is more powerful than that which comes from God. You know, no greater witness uh, can be given to us than that which comes from God. Right. And so we need to, to seek that witness. It's the only thing that, that's going to keep us, um, how do I say, spiritually alive uh -huh. in these times. Uh, I think it's I think it's really important to combine uh, our, our modern scriptures. They talk about the importance of, of learning by study and faith. I think the two should be combined together. Uh, I love church history. I love you know getting deep into stuff. Right. Uh, but I also want my so I want my mind to you know get going, but I want my heart to feel something as well. So I believe in, in combining those two. Um, and we we uh, you know we we encourage our. Uh, our students to to ask dif difficult questions, mm -hmm. um, and I'm glad um, I'm glad that the um, the focus has changed in the church. Now we're more open for these things, and uh, of course, if I I don't want to be critical in any sense, but uh, now we're doing a lot of damage control uh, with things that have happened. I think we could have foreseen some some of that stuff. Uh, I I told my my superiors uh, early on many years ago that hey, you know, we really need to take charge of these questions. We need to define our religion for right, our students, yeah. not others do it for us. And so there was some hesitancy in the beginning, and I, and I get that, I understand, you know, um, that, that we don't want to bring things to the minds of the students that, are, um, that don't build faith. And so there's a balance there, of course. Um, but, but, uh, but having said that, I'm glad that we're moving in a, in a good direction. What, what do you think characterizes study, study by faith? Let's say that I'm I'm, I, I feel that itch yeah. to, to learn more about the church's history. You know, I, I hear people maybe questioning something like, well, how did Joseph Smith translate the Book of Mormon, for example, right, right, or, or the Book of Abraham, or something yeah. like that. And I want to learn more about that, which I think we would both agree is a very righteous desire yeah. to learn as much as we can Absolutely. about these things. Absolutely. But what characterizes faithful study yeah. versus faithless study? Well, I like to use the example of Nephi who uh, was, was, of course, one of our heroes, I'm sure yours also, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, but he, he knew his weaknesses, and he's very open with that, and uh, I think what saved him and his spiritual you know, uh, salvation was that he always turned to God. He, he, he had a keen mind, he wanted to know, he asked questions, he wanted to see what his father had seen, you know, in the visions and all that. Uh, but then uh, he was willing to listen to what the Lord you know, had to say. Uh, so, uh, so he was humble. Uh, he was. Uh, he was. Tr I guess the word is trusting. He was trusting the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, he believed that you should ponder, and pray, and ask God. You know all those things. Uh, and he told his brothers about it when they were, uh, when they were. Uh, what's the word? Frustrated that that they didn't get any answers. They didn't. They didn't ponder. They didn't pray. They didn't ask God. It know? takes work. They didn't trust in him. Yeah. Uh, trust. Yeah. So even when an angel came, you know. So. It was a spirit. Um, there was one example when, when, when Nephi, you know, he, when he's filled with the spirit, he sort of touches them and they, they quake or something like that because they felt the spirit. That touched them, that scared them, not, not the angel, you know, coming in and you know, yelling at them or something. But, but anyway, um, yeah, so in, in the process of helping our students, we, we uh, I and my fellow coordinators, and, and I know many church leaders now, we, we try to guide our, our young people to good sources on the internet to help them, and because uh, we want them to study, we want them to um, to have personal revelation, and, and I guess that's the essence of what I'm trying to say. I'm proud of the of, of the church that that teaches that. On the, on the one hand, we have prophets and leaders who receive inspiration, and we're blessed by you know following their advice. On the other hand, we're not asked to, to follow blindly. We're, we're actually encouraged to find answers for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We believe in personal revelation. That's, that's, what, you know, that's what's going to you know, keep us alive in our testimony. And so, um, so we, we try to guide our students to, to good sources where they can uh, have good knowledge. Because you, know, you need knowledge. You need uh, to search um, in theory and in faith together, as I said. What are some of the, are there any sources that come to mind as, as being particularly 
good places for someone to go look for answers to some of these questions and nurture that curiosity? Right, yeah. Um, yeah, I just finished reading uh, Saints, the book. You, yeah, it's you might great. Have read it. yeah, yeah, it's a great book. Um, the, and then feverishly a researched. A narrative, a different narrative, or a narrative kind of story of the history of the church? Yeah, they've, they've pieced together a narrative through historical documents, right. and because so many of those historical documents are journals, mm -hmm. they can actually really piece together the narrative and how people felt because they yeah. wrote down how they felt, which yeah. makes it easy yeah. to read, but rich with detail. And yeah, I, yeah, I love reading that. Um, there are several websites, uh, of course, that... The, on, on our um, seminaries and institutes uh, webpage, there is a, a resource page that they give several uh, examples. And uh, one, one page I like is, is Fair Mormon. Mm -hmm. I know critics of the church, they, they uh, criticize Fair Mormon, but I think it's really, uh, it's, uh, if I pardon the pun, it's very fair. Uh, it, it really gives both sides. It's got a high ceiling, it, it brings you know, both sides of the coin up to, um, you know, to our eyes so we can see clearly. But uh, what I like about it is that it, it builds, it tries to build our faith, um, and uh, you know, it's not, it's, they're not documents like you have on the other hand that try to, to take down our faith. So it's, um, you have, um, <coughs> excuse me, you have uh, josephsmithpolygamy.org, which is a great site if you want to understand more about that. Mm. It's by Laura and Brian Hales. Um, you have, um, um, of course, uh, um, the interpreter. Which I really like, and um, other sites like that. You know, the Maxwell Institute. If you yeah. want to go deeper into right, things, yeah. um, the Gospel Essay topics, of course, uh, uh, are, are wonderful. You know, by scholars and, and um, sponsored by the church as, as you know, good wholesome documents that that bring the whole. I think a word that we miss sometimes in our discussions is, is context. Right. Uh, and and back to fair a little bit. That's what I like about fair is. is um, and these gospel topic essays, they bring context. You know, they talk about difficult things, but they, they, they bring them in a context where we can understand them. Uh, you know, for example, just an easy illustration, when, when we teach our students about the translation of the Book of Mormon, um, critics of the church, they'll, they'll just say, well, you know, Joseph Smith, he used a hat there, and he was a gold digger and whatever, and they sort of leave out the, well, what did people believe back then, and, and what was the circumstances, mm -hmm. and you know, and why did he use the hat? Well, it was to block out light and so on. It's like we have our, 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 our smartphones. We don't, we don't put them in sunlight. You know, we, we hide them to, just to see you know, right. what's, what's on the screen. You know? <laughs> so it's not real. So when I taught my students about that, mm. they went, oh, OK. If, <laughs> we all, so, if we all wore top hats still, we would probably put our phones in them yeah, often yeah, to be I able mean, to it's see. It's no big deal, I mean, really. So, so yeah. I think we could. That's a bit, that's a good and, and that's why I wanted to, uh, you know, the, the church and, and us to take charge of these of these things because we can we can take the drama away so easily on by adding the context. Yeah, just adding the context. Yeah, that's that's good. A lot of our listeners are going to be parents, uh, church leaders, seminary and institute teachers, who find themselves in a position of trust, mm -hmm. where young people uh, and older people may come to them for guidance who. Yeah. Have begun to scratch an intellectual itch, maybe, and mm -hmm. and and uh, start to maybe feel uneasy with some of the things that they are discovering. Yeah. Maybe they came across a biased source, or or maybe it is just they have trouble with a certain topic, which would which would be totally understandable as well. You you must find yourself in that position fairly often in your job. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Yeah. What um, what advice do you have to those people, um, the, those those parents and leaders and teachers, um, as they in turn help people navigate questions? Well, if it's to leaders and parents, I, I try to admonish them to just be good listeners. I think, I think mm -hmm. you know, the, we, have to, we have to stop, um, and I'm sort of uh, half quoting Elder Ballard here, he, he gave a talk to us teachers about this. He said, you know, the time has passed when we say, well, don't care about that, that's not important, you know, don't worry about it. We don't say that anymore. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so we, we want to be good listeners, we want to listen to them. And, um, and try to, you know, I'm, I'm sometimes tempted to give answers, <laughs> you know, this is how I feel about it, and this is, you know, listen to this, you know, this is a really good scripture or whatever, but, but try to keep that back a little bit. And, and uh, you know, as I, when we talk about students now in particular, when they mm -hmm. have issues and questions, uh, there was one in particular student that came to me at an institute, seminary students, it doesn't happen that often, to be honest. A little younger. Yeah, they're more worried about, you know, what am I going to wear today to school and stuff, so it's not, but, but when they get older, 
Um, but he came to me and he was really disturbed. He was worried about it, uh, some, some things. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I said, hey, let's, let's talk about it. I want to listen to you. And he explained and I, and I guided him to a couple of sources. And I said it, just a few things, but not, not too much, just enough to spark an interest to, to have him get going on this quest. And um, I'm just really happy. He, he, um, it was a long process, but uh, he, he also, I should say, he talked to his bishop as well. He got guidance from several, and his parents, of course. So there were many of us who tried to, to support him. And, um, and that's the pattern I think we should have. We should be very supportive and, and uh, what's the word? Um, Tor Modi, I'm Swedish. Uh, patient. Patient, thank you. <laughs> You've been a missionary in Sweden, you can help That's me. right, that's right. We should be <laughs> patients. It's a great virtue in this case, yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, of course, they're sort of in our hands. They are in our hands, but they're more in the Lord's hands. He knows them, he knows their names, and he, he knows where they are, and he'll help them in due time. I they, love that, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, this young man, he... Um, he was uh, he was happy with all the support he got, uh, and um, cleared his mind of, of these things and felt really good about it. He had that understanding now and that that trust in God. He felt the Spirit, and uh, and uh, he knew it was uh, he didn't have all the answers, but he knew that God led him to the truth. Led and, him yeah, personally. Yeah, yeah personally. so important. Yeah. right? and he decided then to go on a mission. Okay, uh, and serve. And he was a great missionary. And now he just got back. So. Wonderful. Um, you, sometimes I hear people suggest that if we'll only take, take the time to study and to learn, mm -hmm. we might be surprised at what we find. And you must have studied an awful lot over 20 years yeah, could, in CES. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yet here you are yeah. in a, in a, in a church active, yeah, practicing yeah. member yeah. of the church. Yeah. Um, how, how, how have you... Why am I here? <laughs> yeah, why are you here? You've, you've read all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And that's, well, it's a question. Well, I don't ask myself that question. I mean, I know why I'm here, but, but I ask myself that of other people who have read what I've read. And uh, As a matter of fact, you've probably met people that have come to you and say, well, if you, if you only knew what I know, if you read what I've read, then you wouldn't be in the church still. Right. And usually I don't answer because I, but I think in my mind, you know, well, I've, I've, I've read more than you've read. I've studied more than you've studied because I know these people, you know. Uh, and I'm not saying that in a proudful way. I'm just saying, as a matter of fact, you know, that I, that I know of those things, but I'm still here. And why aren't you, you know? Uh, and I, it's so difficult. I don't want to judge anyone and I can't put myself in their place. Uh, I just know the choices that I made and it is a choice. Uh, I've chosen to stay because of several things. Um, uh, one of them being what I mentioned to you before earlier about the, the, the sure witness that came from God. It's the most powerful thing that can come to a human soul. I felt that. I can't deny that. You know, I, like Joseph Smith said, I dare not deny it. Um, it's so sacred to me. So that's, that's uh, you know, number one. And number two, um, when, you know, the gospel itself, and, and I'm sure many others have told you this, uh, the gospel brings us so much joy. Uh, not just joy, but satisfaction, hope, blessings. But I'm not here for the blessings, to be, to be honest. I mean, I'm, I know God will take care of us. Uh -huh. uh, I'm trusting Him. I don't care what, I don't really care, you know, what heaven's going to look like if we're going to eat, you know, Ben and Jerry's ice cream afterwards. I hope we are, by <laughs> me the way. Too, me <laughs> too. <laughs> you know, what heaven's like. I'm just trusting Him. I just, I do this because I love God and, and I love to feel close to Him. And that's, again, I was talking about personal revelation. My goal in life is to be close to my Heavenly Father. Living the Gospel is the best way for me to be close to Him. I feel His presence. I feel His love. I don't want to lose that. I know what it's felt like in, in, you know, when I was on my mission and before that and, and, and all these experiences in the temple and so on. I, I, I cherish those. They make me a better person um, and they bring me closer to God. Why should I choose to go on another path? So um, when we say the Gospel is true, sometimes we go up and we say, well, I know the Gospel is true. Well, and sometimes we should say, well, I believe the gospel is true, but uh, when I've said that sometimes, I, I think about what do I mean by that when I say mm -hmm. I know the gospel is true? Well, I think first of all, again, it's the, 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 the comforting words of the Spirit, but it's just a, a matter of fact, I know that this works. It's like saying, I know the gospel works. That's like saying the gospel is true. When you live the gospel, when you keep the commandments, when mm -hmm. you stay close to Heavenly Father, when you, when you try to keep your covenants, then things work out for you, you know? 
and then you know he's bound to bless you somehow and I felt that so so that's how I know the church is true you know I see the hand of God in, in every little detail in my life and it really does come down to that personal relationship with yeah. God yeah and I'm it's very I'm, individual I'm, I'm saddened when I see people choose other directions but I but hey you know we can just um, we can have to respect their choice and, and love them and hope that the Lord is, is uh, bringing them back or, well or, or guiding them in their life in whatever path they take right yeah, yeah it's well said Louis Hooray, thank you. Thank you so much.